Hey guys, Mr. Antoon here. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to finish it all up this entire semester with the last unit, Unit 8, Elections in Mass Media, and Chapter 7 on the Mass Media. Remember, this is AP College Board number or Unit 5, the last one. <clears throat> here we go. So, Chapter 7, Mass Media. Uh, we're probably going to do the entire whole thing in a um, one video, just to give you the heads up. So here we go. The mass media today. The most important thing you guys got to get out of this first one is how the politicians use, it says choreograph, but use the media to get their message out. And obviously the mass media changed in the early 1900s uh, with the advent of the radio and stuff along those lines, newspaper, you know, radio back then. But once you had the TV and, and the internet, it changes everything, guys. So mass media, if you're a master at this, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, tr President Trump is definitely a master at this stuff. It's this high tech political game you have to play that shapes, you know, how you run. And uh, this is probably going to be the same the, the way it is for a long, long time until things change. But again, information is getting to you guys so much easier because of the massive amount of media and attention it does get. So it's an effective communication t tool to use uh, to, for your political success. You create these media events which are staged. So President Trump will stand in front of some monument like he did. Oh, I should have used that one, obviously. During the, the riots that were happening across, he, he tear gassed the uh, White House people who were protesting, walked across and staged him holding a Bible in front of a church just to show him that you should show, show everyone he's there. But it was staged. He planned it out. And that's kind of what it is. More so the media would be involved, but they're always following the president no matter what. More of a staged one would be they'd set up in front of somewhere, plan it out, let the media come, do things along those lines. Um, it's always about image making. It's always about management. It's always about uh, the president is the most powerful person in our country politically. So therefore, it's about that person getting the message out to the masses about what he or she is doing. So the development of the media politics. You could see here Obama speaking to the White House press corps. Um, they are covering him, asking him questions. He'll have a press secretary as well. We learned about that during the presidential unit. Uh, and the news media wasn't as important as it is today, obviously. Uh, back at the found, founding of our country, not founding, excuse me, the, the 1930s, FDR was the first one that had a good cordial relationship with journalists because newspapers were such a big deal. He held over a thousand press conferences. He set records for it. But here's the thing. He would... They would give him questions in advance, and he would give their answers in advance. So it, it was kind of a staged one. But he did fireside chats. He he was you know honest with what he did to some to, to, to some degree. But then you have this new thing called investigative journalism, which, which they now are trying to uncover scandals, scams, schemes like the w Watergate, like the Pentagon Papers. This is what the media wants to do because they're our watchdogs. Freedom of the press, freedom of the free speech. They're the watchdogs of America. And for us, the people, to keep our politicians in check. So please remember investigative journalism. But again, you could see Trump's, uh, you know, New York Times article about his private conduct with women, even though it's dozen and a half women that have come forward about uh, allegations of assault. Um, nothing has happened. We will see if those ever come to fruition after President Trump is done, January twenty first, two thousand twenty one. The print media is another, it's a big media. Again, it's starting to die, but you're talking about newspapers and magazines. It all kind of started with yellow journalism. You can see late 1800s. The destruction of the warship Maine was the work of an enemy. It was not. We know that now after we unearthed what happened, the boiler blew up and we blame, blame the, Spain, the Spanish, Spain. So therefore we went to war with them in that, in that region. So that's the sensationalized reporting that started a war in a sense. Who destroyed it? $50,000 award, making it sensational, making it entertainment, which is kind of what TV media is today. So that was a big deal, yellow journalism. Again, they've come and checked to some degree. Uh, again, there was a pecking order. New York Times is, is, is kind of the, is kind of the I, I laugh that it's the fourth branch of government, but uh, you could see the New York Times label behind that. It's the idea that there are the America's paper. And you know, Trump does not like, he doesn't like any media except for Fox and American One News Network, which is completely skewed far right. Um, their circulation, meaning how many they print, has declined. Look at the decline 
You could see even the online one. People are not, you know, we, we don't want to pay for that stuff. I, 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 I have the Washington Post because I'm lucky because my, my, I have a teacher account, so I get a free Washington Post, but I don't get the New York Times to follow those stories because I have to pay so much a year and I'm not going to do that. Um, you can see print and online have gone straight down. That was only to 2010 or 2012. You can see the numbers are dwindling big time in terms of that. Now let's turn to the broadcast media. Now look at the word broad is underlined. This means that television and radio have a wide range of topics. They don't just talk about one thing. They, they bring government and politics into the homes of people. This was probably in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when we really started to see the rise of broadcast media because of televisions that were in people's home. Walter Cronkite, we're seeing right here, one of our greatest news correspondents of all time, he just reported the facts. He never gave us opinion. And that's kind of what we've changed into today because we're, we're narrow casting it. And I'll tell you about that in a second. But he was embedded with troops and we saw the truth of what was happening during the Vietnam War. Uh, politicians' appearances and mannerisms were more important than ever now because now they're seeing you. And now with high quality TV, HDTV, 4K, 8K, 5 million K, you're now seeing the blemishes on a face because of the high quality that we're projecting in. So people are they're starting to wear makeup. So you're starting to see it's about your image as well. And if you remember the Kennedy-Nixon debate, that was a big one where Nixon was sick. And if you watched on TV, Kennedy looked calm and composed and Nixon looked nervous because he had been sick. Uh, I was not there. I did not watch it. But this is based on what you see. Uh, if you listen on the radio, they said Nixon won. If you watch in person, they said Kennedy won. So that was our first presidential debate. And again, Kennedy became president. So you can see how important appearance is in the process of that. Now, remember with TV and, and radio, government regulates the media. That's the most regulated form of free speech. It's the FCC. They regulate the airwaves three ways to prevent near control, uh, monopoly of the market, review performances of stations, and issue fair treatment rules for politicians. It's the most regulated form of our free speech called commercial speech, meaning over the commercial airwaves. You remember that? Okay, so the FCC won't let me be. I can't play too much of that because, again, last time I got I got knocked on it on YouTube. But it's the idea that even Eminem's song, the FCC won't let me be, it's the idea you're being censored. But that's kind of what we want. Now, we take the big broadcasting idea and we change it to narrow casting. Narrow casting is making it more of cable news network. That's CNN. Look, cable news network. MSNBC. It's a, it's a part of NBC. But you could see how they're doing with something. Fox News is not just Fox. So it's all aimed at narrowing. And really, it's about politics for the most part. So you're taking broadcasting and you're making it very specific towards. And that's why they call it narrow casting. But you've probably never heard that. It's just cable news channels now, guys. So really, like C-SPAN, politics, uh, Fox News could be. It's, it's mainly politics, but it could be so much more in it. But they're really giving you a lot of opinion now. And you can see on the spectrum on the bottom where those those sit. MSNBC for this left of the groups. CNN is, I would say, moderate to, to liberal there. And then Fox News. Again, you'll see a better uh, breakdown. I just wanted to give you a few, the three big ones. But again, broadcasting to narrowcasting. My animations are all off. I apologize. So the impact of the Internet. Obviously, the potential is humongous. And this can get politicians word out of mouth out there big time. And that is important. And obviously, the Internet is, is uh, pr this purpose of it is to allow information to flow freely everywhere. But it can also be a danger zone. And we know that's happening with your free speech. But you could be spouting uh, uh, incorrect information about everything, about anything like Trump is about the, the election being massively rigged. It's not. All the lawsuits are failing everywhere. Most of us knew this, but him and his followers didn't believe it. They've believed it was massively spread because people didn't listen to the news and they only went right to Donald Trump. So that's, again, the pros and cons from that. But we can learn. We can choose what we want to learn. If I don't want to watch, you know, cable news, I can go and watch the Home Shopping Network. I can watch um, uh, Ink Master Show. I can watch anything that's specific to what I really care about. Even on the Internet now with YouTube being so prevalent since the mid-2000s or mid-2000s, 2000, 2000, 2005-ish became huge. And the last 15 years has been just astronomical in terms of it. But overall, we're disinterested in politics. We'd rather be involved in other things. So that is why it's, we don't have a major, major turnout when it comes to it. So just some things to think about. So you could see here the percentage of Americans up to 2016 that very closely 
follow politics. 40, most Republicans, then Democrats, and then independents. So you could see kind of where we sit. That's 2016. It's probably the same today. Uh, and then you could see uh, overall who very closely follows, about 42% of our nation. That's pretty apathetic, guys. But again, you have more self-interest going on, which is not a big deal at all. Uh, we have private control of the media, which is a danger zone. So we do have publicly uh, funded companies like NPR, the PBS, and APT. You've probably heard of the first two, but the third one, I wanted to put an obscure one in there. And it's the idea that with, look at the money that they're making. That was nine years ago. You know, billions of dollars, 39, 40 billion in broadcast, internet, cable, which is narrow casting is 32, magazines all the way down. Video games are astronomical today. Now, this, this obviously would change. But, it, but this private media is independent of in whatever they want to report, but they're totally dependent on the advertising revenues that they're getting. So when they're saying when they do something really, really bad, they could lose revenues. So it's but it's all about you, the viewer, turning in, tuning, tuning into those to, to for them to receive higher amount of money. Whoever gets the most amount of viewership gets the most amount of revenue and makes the most money. And that is what our danger zone is. We don't have state run media, meaning government media, because again, it's free speech, free press. But there's six massive media conglomerates that own about four fifths of the national daily newspaper circulation and control the broadcast media. And here they are. You could see in 1983, 90% of the media was owned by 50 companies. In 2011, it got down to six. And I think it's the same because I, I was doing more research and I couldn't find it. But again, they might one might buy out the other, it would be five. And therefore, we're gaining some time of major control. And you could see the breakdown of those six right here. Again, let's look at Disney because it's a famous one. They own ABC, ESPN, Pixar, M Miramax, Marvel, and I can add Star Wars as well to this. Time Warner owns CNN. Uh, um, News Corp owns Fox, Wall Street Journal. These are conservative. Uh, GE owns NBC. You're looking at the ones, uh, um, obviously, that impact us the most. That would be NBC as well. There's CBS. Their actual... Uh, uh, one of the big companies also on CBS, the, the television uh, network. So you guys can see again what we're looking at as we go through that. But look at the social media ad now. This is something that they no, no one predicted. You could see the revenue, uh, the, the, the advertising revenue they're getting in the first or second half of that, that's, that uh, uh, year. And look at 2017. I mean, it is, that's just 2018 numbers. It is exponentially moving up big time. So you know social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I mean, I'm probably forgetting a bunch. TikTok, I don't know if TikTok does those ads, but you guys know that. And they're the most active social platform. So if Facebook has a audience of a third of the, the world, that's huge revenues. And you can see Facebook Messenger up there, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, which again, that's more for business and resume sending and Snapchat, more of a social one. But you could see where the revenues could be coming in from that. The world's largest media companies. This was in 2014. Um, and Google, I mean, you're talking about one of the biggest ones. $60 billion it's pulling in. But all the other ones, we well, can see, we saw Disney as one of them. We saw Comcast as one of the big six. Viacom, CBS, News Corp. They're making a lot of money, guys. And they want to continue that. Uh, traditionally, what do they make it from? Advertising, subscriptions, from the print and digital. They're trying to show you the co combination of it. And look, the digital one is increasing whereas the print one is decreasing. Subscriptions are still kind of there, but not as much. And there's the, the ad revenue by 2019. I wanted to show you a little difference. Google doubled its production from 20, whatever the last graphic I showed you in Facebook and Amazon and Instagram. So I wanted to show you some other ones. So then that, that involves tr the president tweeting. Now, Twitter has already came up and said, once the inauguration happens on January 20th of 2021, the presidential account is going to go from 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 Trump to Biden. He, he has his own account, but he's not going to have the president account anymore. So let's see if that stays with the same amount of people, because Trump is, has one of the top, the most followers in the world. But you could see a, a taxonomy, a breakdown of how he tweets. Uh, again, he's tweeting more than ever. Look at from the beginning of his presidency to probably a year and a half ago. So he has ramped it up big time. Um, you could see the bully pulpit we talked about that he has the stage for everyone to hear his message. Look in politics. He has over actually, I think it's way more than this now, but again, this is 2017 numbers. That is what he had over Hillary and Bill and Hillary and Bernie. There in sports, you could see the red is Trump. 
LeBron James has over a hundred million now. So I think this, I, I was trying to find a newer one. I think I did here. Like Trump has 112 million of the political leaders. That's the most. And then the Indian, the Indian uh, prime minister has 94 million and so on. But you could see it. Is that number going to go down? Because that's the POTUS account. Is that number going to go down when he leaves or, or stay the same? But you could see how it breaks down to even more so than, than the newspaper, the news agencies. So it's just something to think about the power that the president has. And again, there's the, the, the numbers from 2016 to 2020, uh, again, before the election, ramped up big time here. Uh, Sinclair Broadcasting is one of these major broadcasting that they sent out a message about fake news. And you could see it uh, covered here. So you get the idea, guys, that you get the idea that they own all of these stations around there. So if they're spouting off the same exact message, almost word for word, is that good or bad? That's the power of the media, guys. All right, 7.2, reporting the news. So we have to find the news, obviously, first. And they call these reporters, they, they call them beats. So you could be a specific location. You could be in Congress reporter. You can be a White House correspondent. And what happens is, they, is that a lot of times when you report the news, you send out a trial balloon. You intentionally leak information to see how the public will react to it. Like there is Obama uh, uh, floating the idea of Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, and then you're going to see the reactions from it. So Hillary was uh, under Obama's first four years. She was the Secretary of State. Um, and again, they have a site where they look for sources, help a reporter out, obviously, and then uh, uh, those sources will give them information and then they can go ahead and, and vet them because you don't want to just report any rumors because you can get in big time trouble, which has happened to some big ones, big reporters out there. But you want to make sure you're vetting the information your source has uh, valid information that's true. Um, this is a, a, a the White House correspondent. I'm going to give you an example of that. Uh, Peter Alexander works for NBC and I went backwards and he when he's the White House correspondent, he will sit, here's the president or here's the press secretary up front and NBC, you can see all the big ones up front. And then as we move further back, it becomes more obscure with it. But again, NBC, one of the first ones up at the front. And there's Peter Alexander. You probably recognize him. He's had some war of words with the President Trump. So here are some of those videos to show you. A group of national and Iowa pro-life leaders are circulating a letter that says anyone but Trump. Effectively, they say you can't be trusted as a pro-life advocate. Well, that's okay. Give, I mean, that's give, your opinion. Look, I'm pro-life, but that's their opinion. But given and what you said. want to do that, hey, all I can tell you is this. As you know, I'm pro-life. In 1999, I've been pro-life for a long time. In 1999, you said you were pro-choice in all respects. And I said, what did I say? You didn't read it. Read the full statement of what I said. Partial birth abortion, the eliminating of, of abortion in the third trimester, big issue in Washington. Would President Trump ban partial birth abortion? Well, look, I'm, I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject. But you still, I just believe in choice. So you guys could see again, uh, what a reporter does is they want to call out a president and call out politicians. You could see Peter Alexander tweeted this. Today, Trump called me an organ of the uh, Democrats. Here's my question he didn't like. You said Russia was kicked out of the G8 because they outsmarted Obama. In fact, it was because they annexed Crimea. They're still there. Why let them back in? And again, the, you could see them confronting each other here. Again, a lot of people calling Trump on his myth truths, or alternative truths, whatever you want to call them, lies. Um, and that's what the reporters are supposed to do with our leaders. So however you want to look at that, guys, Peter Alexander, another one. I'll play these more in class. Um, you can see here he's confronting. You can see Peter right here confronting Trump after the inauguration. 
This is February 17th of 2017, so about a month after it had been uh, inaugurated. And hey, here's Peter giving us a soundbite from MSNBC Studios. Interesting. Jeff Antoon and your class, it's Peter Alexander. I know I promised you Trump Tower, but I'm hoping NBC Studios in Washington will do. Go Shaps. Okay, so if you watch this video, here is the quick little heads up I'm going to give you. If you come to me, if you have physically in class during the pandemic, if you come to me and said, and say, Peter Alexander works for MSNBC, if you say that to me, and I'll give you an extra participation point. If you remind text me, you can the same exact thing. Peter Alexander works for MSNBC. I will give you those points, but I'm only going to give it to the first five people that, that tell me about it. Okay. Cause I know the, the free stuff spreads like wildfire. And I'll tell you the story in class about Peter Alexander and myself. Uh, 2012, you could see the, the famous you know, searches we have here, and I blocked some of them out because they are uh, adult content. You can see it here, guys. I didn't completely block it out, but I wanted to let you know this is how we look for things. Again, what we look for, what we use to, to look for that stuff. Uh, each state, what they Googled in 2015, we talked about Miranda Lambert's, Lambert's divorce, California, the Volkswagen scandal that was happening. In Alaska, it was Barack Obama in 2015 um, presenting the news. So I just talked to you about a sound bite. It's the length of sound we use on the news. Great Britain's at 14 seconds. We're at about eight seconds. So really, we just tell you about something, and that's it. We move on to it. Or we might have a discussion. So you're not going to hear the whole story because our attention spans are so short. It's really just superficial coverage of the news. Again, around eight to 10 seconds. We're the, we're, I mean, we just don't have a big attention span or we'll just change the channel. And we don't want, excuse me, the news media doesn't want you to change the channel because they get ratings based on what you watch. So they devote less time to covering political candidates and more time covering the, the horse race concept. And you can see this graphic from our textbook. I don't know if it's in the one now, but it's in one of them. Up to 12, uh, 2004, we got down to about 7.8 seconds from 43 seconds in 1968. It's the same concept with reading. We don't read as much. Um, we don't write as much. Everything's changing for us as we move forward. Uh, many people believe the news is biased in favor of one point of view. And you can see here of the big ones here, they're skewed mostly liberal. You can see what people have said in responses. And you can see conservative here. Again, that's just a concept. Um, I've read books on it called Left, um, Left Swing, I think it is, or Left Bias. Or it, it proves that the media is mostly left most of them are but again the whole idea of, of broadcasting is get a big audience narrow casting is to keep that audience big but specifically talk about certain topics in it and there's pew researches uh public trust in the media has eroded from 1985 you could see to 2011 often inaccurate politically biased you could see the increases of them uh from from one to the next most trusted television news sources you could see here's another survey uh, this is the Brookings Institute, which is another big one as well. All Americans trust Fox News the most. And do I have a year on this? I'm just going to move some of the stuff that's in the way. 2014. So you guys can see again uh, who's most trusted. Republicans, conservative, moderate, liberal. Uh, again, what they trust from these. That was that was six years ago. Could have changed. Now, Ad Font Media is another one that, that analyzes all of our news sources. And this is great. We were going to do another project on this, but we don't have time this year. But you could see here, you could see the highest ones in the middle are the ones that are, the, that are moderate. And I know there's a lot here, but you could see AP and Reuters, they're wire services. They just tell us the event and what happened. But ABC, PBS, Bloomberg, CBS, NPR. And then as we go, you could see The Economist, Newsweek, just some of the famous ones we see here. And then as we go down, Politico, and then you could see it going a little left, Political, Washington Post, New York Times, Vox, CNN. Vox has moved up because that used to be bottom left because they have better, this stuff is not as opinionated or skewed. There's the Wall Street Journal going right. And then as we get down here, these are the ones that we need to stay away from the most. And what happens is we, we, we actually go to them more often than others. CNN, which is their narrow casting. Look, Fox News is even down further. But there's other sites that do different stuff with this stuff. Like, no, don't even, these are all propaganda. Infowars. Um, where's Trump's new favorite one? American One News. I don't see it over here. 
anyways, um, you get the idea, guys. Here's here's all sides, which is what you use for your, your current event project. This is what people have analyzed and said they are. This is the ones in the middle that I would love for you to go to because they're not giving you as much opinion. So you can form your own opinion. But if I'm going to watch CNN opinion or Fox News opinion uh, here, and there's a OAN, One American News, you're only getting that side of it. You're not looking that there's other people that think other ways. I would even say that go to the point where go just left to right here and focus on these. But this is the key in the middle. And that's what's interesting, again, as we go through this. Uh, news on that. There's just other ones out there. I'm not going to go through all of these guys. It just compares CNN users, where they are, and Fox News users. Just interesting when you see this. Again, I'm not going to go through too much. All right, the last few. Here we go. Uh, news and public opinion. TV news can affect what people think is important. We They can set the agenda. So they can tell you how to think to certain degrees. And that's the problem with what we have recently. But you guys got to figure this out or see that it's happening. And really don't, don't let it influence you too much. Only let it under you. Okay, I get it. But I'm not going to say this is this is the holy text for my understanding that topic. It is going to be, this is what I have to understand. Um, this some some facts in it. And then I have to make my opinion about it. And they, they influence the criteria by which public evaluates our leaders. You could see here negative stories on mainstream media from Romney and Obama comparison on Twitter and Facebook. You're seeing that they're swaying. That's why the, liber the media is more liberal because Romney was not anything close to Trump in terms of the amount of in misinformation that was coming from his mouth. So therefore, it, it is liberal and they wanted to affect it and get Obama into office to some degree. So you could fight that side of it. Uh, coverage of G GOP candidates from this time period when they were all running for office. Look, because of all the negativity and, st and the controversy and the ratings, they wanted to cover Trump more and more. It gave them good TV ratings, which, again, came back to haunt them because he became president for the last four years. Uh, 7.4 is about policy entrepreneurs, people who invest uh, and, and, and use the media to communicate with the electorate. And you could see, again, here's the policy agenda. It all starts with us. These guys link it to, to the policymakers. And again, what issues attract serious attention? And these policy entrepreneurs are people who invest their capital in an issue to get placed high on the government agenda. The Koch brothers, these are conservative investors that really invest a lot of money in, involved in maybe building the wall and getting that traction with the conservative base. So there's a lot of private individuals who are not politicians that can use this to get agenda set. And once that media raises awareness of the issue, it gets put on the political agenda and then the policymakers deal with it. So this is a, this thing is our entire class period. This entire circle, guys, is our entire class for, from beginning to end pretty much. All right, lastly, understanding it, guys, this is kind of an overview as well. Look at the number, uh, the, the things it says, number one, it's down here. That's the only one I didn't change. So the scope of government, guys. So obviously the media acts as watchdogs. That's a great thing. But they can also be what Trump has brought up is that they don't agree with him. So he calls them fake news. So if you're a conservative, you skip Trump or excuse me, you skip the media, whoever's calling him out as a watchdog. And you're only going to what you want to hear. That's danger zone because, yes, media is not the greatest thing in the world, but they still give us the information to call us out against uh, corrupt politicians. So you could see how those issues uh, can cause problems with it. Um, if the, I'm going to go back. If the media identifies a problem, it forces the government to address that problem. And a lot of times it doesn't seem that that's the way we hold them as accountable as, as not. If, if, a, if a politician like uh, the senator from Minnesota, uh, what's his name from SNL? He, he was he was he did uh, when he took a picture with a, a, a troop that was sleeping, he pretended to grab her. And it, he didn't really grab her, but the picture showed that. And he thought it was funny because he was a comedian on SNL. Um, Frank, um, I just thought I got it. I got it. I got it again. Um, he was, he stepped down. So the pressure from the media made him step down because of uh, his inappropriateness of what he did. So the media can can affect that side of it. Obviously, with the individualism, candidates can run on their own, appealing to the to people on television. Meaning Trump was a celebrity on television. He was a, a mogul, uh, a real estate mogul, made a lot of money, became popular as a result of it. So he used the media to his advantage. Um, and it's, it's obviously e easier to focus on one person. And here's what Trump did. Here's what Ronald Reagan did. Here's what Obama did. than it is to focus on 
all the other things that are a lot more complex like Congress and the courts. So that's why the president is, is such a big individual in there. Um, obviously, and, and then last part, democracy and media, information fuels our democracy. Again, but the danger zone is it's entertainment news now. It's hard because they should be just giving us the facts and then letting us, the, the Americans, decide. But we're not smart enough, I guess. And so now they give us their opinion, and then we're spouting that off, spouting that off instead of having discussion with both sides. And it seems like it's causing more of a divide than anything. It's a business. Please remember, they want to give people what they want. If it's entertainment, if it's, if it's controversy, people want to watch it, and they're going to continue to give that to us. And that's also a danger zone when it comes to that, guys. Um, I can't, I'm having trouble clicking. Anyways, you can see here, I'm going to leave it on the summary one. The media does shape our public opinion. Broadcast media ha might have replaced it for, for over the last like, 20, 30 years. A narrow casting in the internet are further shifting the media. And obviously they're about, they're pro pro profits, the media. So, but they do have a major, major impact on our government, on our politics, on our thoughts as people. So that is what we're going to end with, guys. It's been a pleasure working with you all semester. This is the end of our content. I will see you hopefully in the future somewhere. You guys take care.